Good morning, Sunny Hills, and all those who are visiting with us from social media. Um, we're glad you're here, and uh, today's lesson is, uh, what do we do now? And it's, it's funny, as I was listening to Leanne's message on Friday morning, uh, toward the end of her lesson, that was a question she asked, what do we do now? And so sort of just like <clears throat> her lesson launched uh, off of Eric's Devo on Monday, my lesson seems to be launching really uh, from uh, her lesson on Friday where, where she left off. And I love it when those things happen. We're sort of all on the same page as we're thinking about how to navigate uh, our daily activities and even the, the coming future. Things are changing. Things are changing. Uh, stores are opening. Some stores are opening. Uh, some people are going back to work. Uh, there's, there's some changes in how that all happens. Uh, be some beaches are open uh, with limited activities, restaurants with limited seating, and you know, things are different. Uh, even just going to the grocery store, we may notice if you, if you go to the grocery store, there's lines out the door uh, or at the door waiting to get in. They're monitoring how many people can go in and uh, lines waiting to go to the check stand. There might be arrows up and down the aisles to direct flow. Uh, social distancing and all that. Um, it's just different. And, and so we're not sure how all that's going to work out. And it can be unsettling. It can be uh, unnerving a little bit. And so I just want to look at that and, and think, well, what do we do? What can we do? And maybe not so much what do we do in regard to those things, but, but really in regard to the unsettling nature of it all. What do we do about that? Is there anything we can do to manage uh, our moorings, our, our grounding, and, and feel secure? And so I, I, I want to look at the story of Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. No, I want to look, yeah, Joseph. And um, I know we've talked about Joseph, and, and he's a, a good candidate for this study. But, but I want to uh, look at four things we can do from the story of Joseph. We can, maybe uh, suggestions we can get from the story for what we can do to manage this uh, sort of unsettling time. So first, let's, let's think about how maybe our, our story lines up with the story of Joseph. Joseph, uh, you know, everything was kind of going well for him. Uh, God showed his favor on him, and, and his father showed his favor by giving him the, the dream coat, the colored, many colored coat. And so things were going well, and then all of a sudden it wasn't. <laughs> He, he was uh, socially distanced from his family, thrown into a pit, uh, socially distanced from his family, sold into slavery, and then falsely accused, and then imprisoned, and years in jail, uh, not able to be with his family, and, and uh, things just didn't seem to be going very well at all. And uh, so just walking alongside that story, we, we, we might feel that way too. We might feel like things were going pretty well, I mean, I'm not saying everybody thinks everything was going great, but you know, we got to go to, we had jobs. Most of us had jobs. We got to go to our job or, or we got to do our daily routines. We got to go to the, the gym or to the beach or, or we got to go to church and hang out together and do fun things together. We got to have musicals and, and activities like VBS. And so, I mean, things were going well. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, bam, it's isolation and, and uh, socially distance and, you know, sort of just locked down. And now we've been in this lockdown for a long time. And, and uh, so our stories sort of line up with Joseph. This, and I know some of our, our members, excuse me, have, uh, have not even been able to have their family gatherings that they love to have. So, so isolated from family. So uh, just, just sort of imprisoned in a way. Uh, in some ways. And so our story sort of lines up with Joseph's. And uh, when we look at, at Joseph's uh, time through that isolation, through that social distance from his loved ones, um, it, it, it's interesting. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is, and the, the, the message for us is what we can do. Here's what we can do. We can, we can not complain. There's plenty to complain about. <laughs> For a lot of people, there's plenty. I'm thinking of the schools, of people who are graduating right now. They don't get to have their normal graduations. Uh, 
there's a lot that we could be complaining about. And, and, uh, but I look back through the story of Joseph. I, I had to read it through again because it was my sense. I couldn't remember Joseph complaining. I, I read all the way through uh, because I thought he was, he was uh, attacked by his brothers, thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, uh, sold to Potiphar, falsely accused by his wife. I mean, he was always doing as best he can, and, and, yet, and then he was thrown in prison, and, and, and years and years he helped some guys out who didn't help him out later. He had a lot to complain about. And, and I just remembered, I thought, I never, I can't think of any place where he complained, where his attitude went downhill. He just, he seemed to be okay. But I went back and read it just to make sure. And yeah, sure enough, I, I don't, maybe you can find, I, I didn't see it. After all that, he went through it. He didn't complain. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm thinking, uh, as we think about this hard times we're going through, there may be plenty to complain about, but, uh, but we shouldn't complain. And, and just like Joseph, I, I thought about what was it? What, what kept him in a positive spirit? And I think he was in a positive spirit all the way through. And, and I, I, I look at, he began with the promises of God. He began with God promising him favor and a future and a vision for a time when he would, would be raised up and, and sort of rule over. And I'm sure that that had something to do with all those dark times with keeping his, his motivation up and his attitude up and his, uh, he just didn't give up and, and he didn't complain. And in fact, at every point in the story, it just, it shows, it says God was with him and, but he did his very best. He was always doing well for people. He always, he always gave his best. And so he's not complaining and he's giving his best and it's because he has this future hope. Well, church, we've been given a future hope as well. Paul says, uh, now, as he's looking you know, at the end of his life, now there's in store for me a crown of life, which the Lord himself will give me, and all those who long for his appearing. That's us. There's a crown of life waiting for us. But also, Paul says, I'm, I'm convinced that these present sufferings aren't worth comparing with the glory that's to be revealed in us. There's something held out there. That, that God has promised us that's way, way more than, than the, what our circumstances are right now. Joseph had that vision of a future hope, and God has given us, that to us as well. We have this future hope, and that can carry us through and, cause us, and should cause us to maintain a positive attitude and not complain, but also to be thankful. That's the second thing. Uh, number one, let's not complain. Let's maintain our hope. Number two, let's be thankful. Be thankful in all things. Really? Thankful? This is what we're going to be thankful for? What's going on right now? I know, it's hard. It's hard. Um, Corey Tenboom has a story in her biography, the, the Quiet Place, about when she and her sister Betsy were in Ravensbrook, a concentration camp and uh, and they were sleeping on rancid hay bales for beds and the whole barrack was infested with lice and fleas and one day she was complaining to her sister and Betsy said God tells us to be thankful in all things and Corey said thankful for fleas and lice how are we gonna be thankful for that a few weeks later one of the uh, officers was was uh, called to go into that barracks, that barrack, and and uh, and something had happened in there that they were supposed to go see, but but the officer wouldn't go in. In fact, none of the guards or officers were going in that barrack for for weeks and weeks, and they they wouldn't go in there because of the infestation of lice and fleas. And so Betsy pointed out to Corey that for all of those weeks. They weren't being harassed or hurt. They were being left alone. And in that time, they were building relationships with the other uh, women and girls in that, in that, er in that barrack. And, and they were teaching them about Jesus. And they were talking about, about God. And, and they used that time and they weren't, they weren't prevented in any way because of lice and fleas. And so Corey Tenboom, uh, she 
learned that you can be thankful even for uh, lice and fleas, which sounds crazy, but, uh, but this is the attitude we should have, to be thankful in all things. And in fact, the New Testament, the Bible, <coughs> encourages us. <coughs> Still fighting this weird cough. The, the New Testament actually encourages us to look at the story of Joseph, especially during these times. To look at the story and, and to find things to be joyful about, to, to be thankful for. But it's hard to see in the English uh, because of the, the way that, and, I, and I've, I know I've shared this before, but, but the way that the, the name James is translated. Because in the book of James, it begins with uh, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so it says James, and, and so we don't pick anything up when it says that. And then it says, to the 12 tribes scattered in the dispersion. Uh, so we just think, okay, James is talking to all those uh, Jewish Christians out there. But if we were reading in the Greek, and I just want to show you this. If we were reading in the Greek, here's, here's the name. This is the name of the uh, book of James. And this is Jacobus, 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 okay, Jacobus. Uh, here's the name Jacob. Now, what does that sound like, the English name? Jacob, Jacob. It's Jacob. That's the name, Jacob. This name that our book of James is titled, that's just a variation. It's just like Rick and Ricky. Okay, maybe Bob and Bobby, something like that. This is just a form of the word Jacob. It's from the same Jewish name, Jacob. And so, if we were reading it in the Greek, we would be reading it, it would say, Jacob, form of the name Jacob, to the 12 tribes. Now, see, when you hear that, Jacob writing to the 12 tribes, then your mind should naturally go back and think about Jacob, the patriarch, and his 12 sons who become the tribes of Israel. And so you're thinking about Jacob to the 12 tribes, and then he says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you face, now it's variously translated, ver trials of various kinds, uh, uh, variegated trials, there's different ways it's called here. But the Greek word here, it says, count it joy when you face Poikolos, poikolos trials. What is that, poikolos trials? Poikolos is the exact same word used for Joseph's amazing Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> His, when he was given this coat, it was poikolos. That's what it was, many colored. And so Jacob to the 12 tribes says, count it joy when you wear a many-colored coat of trials. And that's because the story of Joseph shows us that even through all those difficulties that he got, and a lot of them started with his coat, <laughs> covered by his father with a coat, and it, it caused his brothers to re rebel against him. And so, but, but the story tells us to be, be thankful and, and count it joy. Because what we learn from the story of Joseph is that when you get to the end of the story, you find out, as Joseph says to his brothers in Genesis 45, he, it says, So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near. They were so afraid. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. And he goes on to say, you meant it for bad, but God meant it for good. It's not that what you did was good, you, you were doing bad, but, but we can count the whole thing as joy because God was doing something good, something awesome and something that would end up saving family and even Egypt. So, so count it joy. Be thankful. Be thankful for all this craziness. Yes, yes. Because 
<coughs> because we don't know what God is accomplishing through all of this. He's doing something, and, he, and something great. And as we look back on these difficult times, uh, 20, uh, hindsight is way better 20, 2020, and we'll be able to see and realize all the awesome things God was able to do in these times. So, so as we live through them, like Joseph, let's not be complaining, but instead let's have joy and let's be thankful for things that we can be thankful for and know that God has something great planned in the future. So that's two things. The third thing, so let's not complain. Let's be thankful. Third thing, <coughs> let's use our gifts to serve others. <coughs> we need to use our gifts to serve others. We see Joseph doing that all the way through this time. But especially, I mean, when he served, when he served uh, 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 Potiphar, when he served Potiphar, when he served the captain of the uh, guard in the jail, uh, all the way through, he's doing his best. He's using his gifts to serve. And, and then I want to point out that using his gifts to serve others actually, actually was the beginning of being released from his prison. You notice that? It, the fact that he interpreted the dream or the dreams of the baker and the cupbearer, he interpreted those dreams, that using of gifts uh, started the ball rolling that got him out of prison eventually. Because when the butler finally remembered him was uh, when Pharaoh had a dream and needed interpreting. And so he remembered, hey, uh, I know somebody that can do that. So, so Joseph using his gifts actually started the ball rolling to get him out of that prison. And, and I want to say, using our gifts can do that as well. Maybe not get us out of this home quarantine thing, but using our gifts can get us uh, free from a lot of prisons. We might be imprisoned in our, our greed or our selfishness or our pride. We might be imprisoned in depression or fear. Uh, there, there's all kind of ways that we are imprisoned by things. And those things can be, they can, we can begin to escape from those prisons when we start using our gifts to serve others. I love the story um, that Josh told us on Wednesday night in our Hebrews Bible study on, on a Zoom. Uh, uh, Josh uh, sort of gave up some of his time uh, he spent it uh, living with his great grandma to uh, to help her in her final years, and uh, and so he was using his gifts and talents to help her as she managed the last few years of her life and and uh, was shut in and and uh, while Josh was doing that and sort of setting his life on hold while taking care of her, the amazing thing is uh, his gr great grandma was having him take her to church. And, and throughout those years, God was using great grandma to draw Josh closer and closer to God. Even though it was Josh setting aside his life to serve her, he was being blessed tremendously in the process. And in fact, uh, I think one of Josh's uh, uh, most wonderful memories is, is being there while his great grandma went to be with the Lord. And, and I would describe it as, as God just tearing the heavens open. And, and showing himself to Josh as, as he watched his great-grandma in great peace move on to be with Jesus, like in a big hug. And, uh, and that solidified Josh's faith. And, and so I look at that and I say, using, using our gifts just blesses us to such a great extent that it, it can release us from all kinds of prisons. And so Joseph used his gifts. He went and interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Uh, he used it for the baker and the uh, cupbearer, and that, that was eventually what got him out of prison to use his gifts for Pharaoh. And so he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams. And that brings us to our fourth uh, point uh, that we can get from Joseph's story. Uh, so let's not be complaining. Plenty to complain about, but let's not complain. Let's be thankful in all things. 
even for the difficult times. Let's use our gifts to serve others. And then the final thing, let's use what we know to save the world. Let's use what we know to save the world. Joseph, interpreting the dream, found out that there was going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. And he was able to use what he knew to prepare Egypt by rationing during the bounty for the time of famine. And by using what he knew, he was able to save not only his family, but all of Egypt as well. He used what he knew to save others. Jesus tells us in Matthew 28, in verse 18 and following, he says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And now he's talking to his disciples. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always. Jesus, he's called us to share this message of faith, to go and tell people what we know to save the world. And, but, but we're like Moses. We, we, we talk back to God and we say, no, uh, you know, that's not me. I'm, I, I don't talk good. So you got to use somebody else. And understand that. And, and we fear that, you know, we might not know enough to out-argue somebody and, and we may not have all of the, the, the systematic theology to prove our points and to, to make people view our brand better than their brand of, of church stuff. And, but that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what Jesus was talking about. There's a story in John chapter 9 about a guy like me and you. Well... In some ways, anyway. He was a blind man. And he was trying to share what he knew about Jesus with university religion professors of his day. And they weren't having it. They, they were going to out-argue him. They had all the arguments. They had all the scriptures. They had all the Bible verses memorized. And, and this guy didn't stand a chance. Except... <laughs> Except he had something that they could not defend. It reminds me of the Karate Kid when Mr. Miyagi tells tells uh, Daniel Larusso, he says, "When you do that crane technique, you know, he says, if you do it right, no can defend. Uh, this is it. This blind man, he had something that if he if he used it, there is no defense." He said, I don't know about all that stuff, but this one thing I know. I was blind, but now I see. What are you going to do with that? That that can't be contradicted. This one thing I know. I was blind and now I see. Church, if we have this, if we know that we were condemned, that we were in sin, that we were broken, that we had no peace with God, that we were carrying around a great burden of guilt and fear, and that we fear judgment and condemnation and death. If we know that we, we had been there and we've been freed and given peace with God and confidence of our salvation and no fear of death, Hebrews 2, Jesus destroyed him who holds the power of death to free us who all our lives were in fear of death. If we've received that and we have this peace and confidence and, 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 and joy and relationship with God, if we have that, then we have this one thing I know. And, and we have to know there are people all around us. And may, maybe they don't all realize it, but there's people all around us who are... are are grieving and and feeling guilty and broken and condemned and and lost and no peace, especially no peace with God. And we have a message. We have knowledge that we can give them. We can tell them about Jesus. And and even if they resist and even if they argue against it, we don't have to be able to beat all their arguments. This one thing we know, that we were lost and now we're found. We were blind, but now we see. We were guilty, but now we're innocent by the blood of Jesus. 
So these four things we can learn <coughs> from the story of Joseph. Um, God bless you all. Uh, I love you and can't wait to be able to have some normalcy returning. May not be for a while, but uh, we'll see. But in the meantime, let's not complain. Let's be thankful. Let's use our gifts or to, sh uh, to serve others. And let's use what we know to save the world. God bless. Bye-bye.